The thylacine or the Tasmanian tiger is, if you ask me, the most well-known example of an extinct species driven to the edge by human beings. It's also one of my personal favorite creatures and why I am so obsessed with the idea of seeing this animal return to the face of the planet. Whether I find it on an expedition, somebody gets one on camera, or colossal biosciences bring one back, I hope to see one in my lifetime. In this video, we're gonna break down the science as to how the thylacine may be brought back from extinction through genetic work by colossal biosciences. Let's dig in. The thylacine is hands down my favorite extinct creature in the world. And honestly, it should be yours too. The thylacine range from New Guinea through to mainland Australia and Tasmania. It was said to be an endurance hunter since it had a tendency to track down and tire out its prey. One of its main food sources was the now extinct Tasmanian emu. It is widely contested that it is regarded as extinct in mainland Australia due to competition with the dingo as well as increased settlement. Tasmania served as thylacine's last stronghold with an estimate of above 5,000 individuals present at the time of European settlement in the early 1800s. It was soon found out that the cattle and other livestock the settlers brought along with them were being hunted, resulting in livestock loss, specifically around sheep. Despite evidence that feral dogs and mismanagement were responsible for this, the thylacine quickly became the victim and a bounty system was put in place by settlers in 1830, and by 1888, the Tasmanian government introduced their bounty scheme offering one pound for each adult thylacine killed and 10 shillings for each joey, or juvenile. There isn't much room for debate when it comes to identifying the main cause of the thylacine's extinction. Estimates suggest that approximately 3,500 thylacine were killed by humans during 1830 and 1920. Just think about that for a second. In the early 1800s, as we pointed out before, there was an estimate to be greater than 5,000 thylacine. Within 120 years, more than half of them had been killed. Along with hunting, foreign diseases, and major habitat destruction contributed to a huge population decline. And what we're led to believe was the last ever known thylacine died on 7th of September, 1936, in Beaumaris Zoo, Hobart. Even though many sightings occur every year, even to this day, it was officially declared extinct by the IUCN in 1986 and is likely gone. Sure, some people would probably be like, oh, the thylacine's extinct, what's in it for me? Well, within their environment, these species occupy a niche, which when disturbed, causes catastrophic problems. At the top of its food chain, the thylacine, as a keystone species, played a significant role as a protector of environmental health for the niche it occupied. And as the apex predator, it removed the sick and weak and kept balance with competitors, ensuring species diversity. Well, the lack of an apex predator in the Tasmanian environment was soon evident, resulting in severe trophic downgrading. Trophic downgrading is defined as the causal degradation that occurs when apex predators are removed from an ecosystem, leading to a cascading effect down the food chain with ecological consequences on lower trophic level groups and systems. So what does that mean? What that means is when you take out the predator at the top, whether that's a tiger, a thylacine, a shark, everything beneath it gets offset. All of the prey species explode, there's disease, there's sickness, there's rampant issues within those species. They eat down the things underneath them, whether that's overgrazing or overhunting, and you have a massive imbalance where animals cannot be regulated because the thing that sits at the very top of the food chain that controls this pyramid-like structure is now gone and everything gets out of whack and once it's all out of whack it can easily collapse we're seeing this a lot in tasmania around mange it's because there is no apex predator in that environment and i know firsthand because i went to tasmania and i looked over a valley with my fleer binoculars it was literally like the african savanna the sheer amount of prey animals was absolutely insane and this very surge in prey species animals like Feral cats, rabbits, wallabies, and patamelons is not at all good for the environment. In fact, it led to a sharp increase in the amount of roadkill on Tasmanian roads, with some estimates saying around 32 animals die every hour as roadkill in Tasmania, which is just nuts. The onset of Tasmanian devil facial tumor disease is a direct consequence of trophic downgrading, brought about by an overabundance of devils. 
Overabundance in a species leads to interbreeding, subsequently lowering the gene pool. And if a disease passes through just a few individuals due to low genetic diversity, a huge population can quickly become affected. And even worse, facial tumor disease is super contagious and it slashed the Tasmanian devil population from around 140,000 animals to around 20,000, which is nuts. And it would have been completely avoidable if we hadn't killed off the thylacine. So this is why we should do absolutely everything we can to bring the thylacine back. We need to repair the ecosystem. We need to replace a species that we unjustly eradicated by mislabeling it as a murderous killer and just generally help to eradicate overpopulation, which is causing overgrazing, which is causing way too many dead animals on the roads, and put back this incredible, iconic, amazing predator that deserves to be in this ecosystem. So how would an animal like this be brought back? Well, we all know, if you're watching this video, that I've gone out and looked for them a number of times. I still think there could be tiny remnant populations in Papua New Guinea, but more likely to beat me to the punch is Colossal Biosciences de-extinction. In fact, I was really lucky because I got to go to Colossal's lab and learn from lead scientist Sarah Orr just how they're doing that amazing work. So make sure you check out the video right here if you haven't seen that yet. Now, Colossal's work is not complete with the birth of the first de-extinct thylacine. The Tasmanian Thylacine Advisory Committee, established to guide and support these efforts, will play a crucial role in ensuring the success and sustainability of the reintroduced thylacine population once they're actually established and ready to be rewilded. Then the rewilding efforts begin and the planet begins to heal. Fortunately, the habitat in Tasmania has remained relatively unchanged, providing the perfect environment to reintroduce the thylacine and enabling it to reoccupy its niche. And it's not just stopping with the thylacine. Thanks to all the technology Colossal has developed, it's saving other species too. The northern quoll, a vital predator in the Australian ecosystem, has seen a 75% population decline due to cane toad introduction in the 1930s. Cane toads were introduced to eat cane beetle in northern Australia where they grow a ton of sugar cane. Well, sure enough, just like when humans interfere and bring stuff in, the cane toads exploded, they had no natural predators, and in little venom-filled sacks behind their eyes, are toxins that animals in Australia have never evolved to eat. So, as predators, like the quoll, began to eat the cane toads, they would get poisoned and die. Now, fast forward to today, eradicating the over 200 million cane toads in Australia is not a feasible option. So what can we do? Well, Colossal is aiming to save the northern quoll by creating genetically resistant offspring through CRISPR editing induced pluripotent stem cells, which is awesome. So what does that mean? It means Colossal takes the cells of the quoll, edits them so that when they eat this toxin from the cane toad, as I just pointed out, there's over 200 million of them, they're actually resistant to that toxin and it doesn't kill them. Initial experiments on Donart cells, which Colossal is using in thylacine de-extinction, have shown tenfold toxin resistance. By using this CRISPR technology and editing genes within the Dunard or within the quoll and putting that back into the ecosystem, these animals that are currently defenseless against the toxin of these toads and don't know not to eat them can go out and eat the cane toads, which is great because that's a twofold win, right? That means animals that are being driven towards extinction by humans introducing the cane toads will now be able to eat those cane toads or hopefully pushing those cane toads towards extinction or at least helping eradicate them while not killing themselves in the process of eating these horrible invasive frogs that shouldn't be there in the first place. This is all fantastic and Colossal aims to have the first animals on the ground within five years that have this hereditary defense system. And man, it's just incredible to think that I'll get to see a thylacine in my lifetime one way or another. So make sure you like, subscribe and all that good stuff and stay tuned.